the uh, had to close the school is because there was um, the families that had children that moved away after that 1919 uh, hurricane. The uh, next hurricane that we had that was of very much of importance, of course, was the 21 hurricane, which uh, broke the uh, pass through. The biggest hurricane that we had during my lifetime, it uh, was 1926. Though the uh, 21 hurricane knocked the uh, uh, fish house down and drowned Mr. Rhodes, that was Henry Rhodes's uncle. The, which, uh, which fish house did it the knock down? The Blind Pass Fish the House. The one out that there on the, stilts. Uh, this one wasn't in here yet, yes. you see. That was put up uh, later. Yeah. The um, a uh, bulkhead uh, went down. There used to be a bulkhead at the end of Roosevelt uh, Channel. Uh, that went down in 21 uh, hurricane. The um, next... Well, what else happened in the 26 hurricane? It blew the fish house out. No, the uh, fish house went down in the 21 hurricane. 21. Uh -huh. But uh, 20... Uh, Six hurricane, there was a joiner family that was living out using one of those little fish houses and a, uh, a lighter, and the lighter broke loose and uh, broke up by the time it got uh, over to Wolford Keys. The reason um, why he didn't get away when the rest of the people left was he had uh, two. Um, types of uh, engines, the uh, Dubry had broke a uh, spark plug, which used the same spark plug as the Model T Ford. The uh, Kermath engine used a uh, spark plug that was similar like uh, the ones we had now, and the, the um, rotor head had cracked on it, so he couldn't use the part off of one engine onto the other, and both of them went out at the same time, which was uh, of course, something that's very unusual, but that's the luck of a. Some people get caught on in in a hurricane, and mm -hmm. his neighbors apparently didn't know that he was in that um, bad a shape, and um, the uh, man in the ice house hung on to a piling for a uh, couple hours during the worst part of the uh, storm. And he his name was Corsi. And he survived? He survived, but he was, the way the uh, ice house was swinging and swaying, he expected it to go down. But it didn't go down that time. It had gone, uh, it had been rebuilt, you see, since the, it went down on the uh, previous bad uh, storm. Uh, during, or uh, right after that uh, 26 hurricane. Well, just I, a minute. During that during that hurricane, <clears throat> Mr. Knowles was killed. Was that his name, who, d who couldn't fix the motors on his boat? No, he, uh, <clears throat> he survived. He lost one child. Uh, but it, that was Joyner. 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 <clears throat> yeah. Now, uh, <clears throat> was anyone else killed on the island during that hurricane? Uh, that was the only one that was killed uh, here. Although that was yeah. the same hurricane that uh, drowned over 200 people up on um, on this side of Lake Okeechobee, yeah. the um, was there has there been anyone else killed in hurricanes on this island that you know of? Well, Captain Smith got out in '44 hurricane. I wasn't here when that happened, but they heard uh, uh, they're still talking about it. They got out and I think he was a feeble old man. Got down, couldn't get up again, you know, and was. And uh, yeah. by the time it had passed, they had to, uh, he had, well, died during the hurricane, but I don't know that it was uh, the hurricane that killed him. Uh, I see. He was, uh, now, what other destruction occurred in the 26 hurricane besides uh, the fish house? The um, <clears throat> tin roofs that was nailed over shingles blew off. But the ones that were nailed solid to a sheeting, or where, where this fastened right on into two before's, are uh, held good and are still holding. Now, I might mention that is because the uh, last time that I had my 
roof put on. I put mine on that way, and I had to practically uh, fight the building code people over there. But uh, I told them that everybody else on that uh, next street this way were using that kind, and that kind of roofs went through Hurricane Donna. And uh, Hurricane Donna would be, would be our next big hurricane. It had greater wind velocity probably even than the uh, 26, but it was just a dry storm comparatively. Now, now Donna was in 1960. 1960 would be Donna. Uh, we, we had uh, two or three sweeps of uh, where hurricanes brushed past us uh, between those times and even since then. Uh, you see we got just so far out in the draw winds that they're hardly, we won't even mention them, you know, because yes. they, they did no uh, more damage than the northwest Gale would have. Was there much, much destruction here in the 1960 or down a hurricane? Um, it blew a few roofs off that were, um, this isn't a commercial, but all of the 25-year um, guarantee uh, roofs that was put on by Montgomery held. Now they, um, uh, therefore some of the contractors, like uh, when Arvid Johnson was contracting like that, he says it'd be a false uh, economy to try to put on a cheap, a cheaper roof than the best, because you see what I mean. If you put on a uh, cheaper roof and then have to redo it again, it'll cost you more than to. Uh, paid a little bit more and had it put on right the first time. And who was Montgomery? Montgomery roofing in Fort Myers. He was uh, did a lot of roofing contractors on these islands. You see yeah. our uh, regular contractors uh, subcontract uh, a lot of the uh, work. And I you see, see I was uh, doing the subcontracting on the electrician and then the uh, we had the uh, plumbing plumbers that would subcontract the uh, plumbers and and the painters subtract the uh, uh, painting you, you see the uh, contractor yeah. himself uh, uh, sometimes has as high as a half a dozen subcontractors uh, working on his job I see now in addition to the roofs having blown off were any houses totally destroyed in 1960 on this island I don't just don't remember of any being totally destroyed. And a lot, of trees, there, down, a lot of trees went uh, over and blocked the road. We had to use chainsaws. These um, Australian pines was the biggest headache uh, in Donna where they uprooted and uh, went across the uh, roads. And what part, portions of the roads particularly were involved? Between here and the uh, bridge all through uh, Dickeyville here where uh, through. They went across, and uh, a few of them blew over down next to, um, between the S curve and the bridge. Even uh, did that? Did that prohibit any evacuation of the island? It would have been <coughs> impossible to evacuate the island after the um, hurricane had already started uprooting trees and uh, throwing down wires. If anybody's ever going to evacuate these islands, be sure and start it. Uh, far enough ahead of the hurricane that you can be to wherever you are going before the hurricane hits. Now uh, the reason why we couldn't evacuate the, uh, for earlier hurricanes, this hurricane syst warning system is something that has been invented since World War II. Back in the uh, the first few hurricanes each man had to have it be his own weather bureau. We had uh, our barometer, uh, a few barometers on the island, and humidity gauges and thermometers, and um, you take a look at the sky and figure out which way the um, wind was blowing and uh, make your own guess on it. Uh, <clears throat> now to go back to the 1919 hurricane that you said made most of the farmers leave the island, uh, who remained on the island after that hurricane? The um, storekeeper came back, uh, or uh, Tom Alderman was he was here. G.J. Keston was here, and uh, uh, Charlie Knapp. The other one would be uh, the Gores that uh, 
ran the post office. They made a place that they call Camp Gore, for, uh, the, where they took in a few uh, winter uh, boarders. The, um, and where did these Gores live? Just south of this uh, road, across the road that would be, uh, was Coconut uh, Drive, right up until they changed the names here. It was just uh, did they live between above where these? Jet, uh, Jet built his house almost in their uh, backyard. I see. Um, now, in the, addition to the Gores, were, were both AM and PM Gore here? Uh, AM was PM's father. Uh, see, one of them was Alma Gore and the other one was Paul Gore. Uh, getting back to how many people there were, they had a uh, what they called a freeholders uh, election uh, in the, uh, about 1923, and there was only um, six eligible voters on Captiva Island that owned their own property, and five of them was on the board to let you know how few people there were that stayed on through uh, after that time. And uh, the uh, five people, Charlie Knapp was the clerk that was on the board, and he read the directions on how to um, conduct a, um, an election. And um, he says there's nothing in this sheet that says where the we have to open the polls for the election therefore the uh, all five of them got into um, a Model T Ford car and drove up to uh, Chadwick since Chadwick was sick in bed and they opened the polls in Ch CB Chadwick's bedroom and uh, all six of them cast their um, ballot and uh, they put the sealing wax on the uh, entrance of the ballot box and uh, officially closed it. And uh, <clears throat> Charlie Knapp t took the uh, ballot box uh, and caught the ferry going to town. Now, that <clears throat> Chadwick was then uh, riding in the but, manor house? Yes. That so the manor the house old... was the first polling place on the island, then? No, it had been held down here, but it was a, um, that happened to be a freeholder's election. You see, oh, on the, in, Florida, see. in Florida, we have uh, one election where everybody can uh, uh, vote, or that's uh, registered voters, but in order to be a freeholder's election, is governing taxes in Florida, you have to own your own property. I see. Now, could you, could you remember who the five freeholders were at that time? Uh, one of them was Mrs. Gore, Charlie Knapp, G.J. Kesson, and my uh, brother. Which brother? My brother James. That's James. Carl's uh, father. Yes. And uh, he at that time owned the property that is now the uh, Gulf View. What was he called it? The Gulf View Inn. As he opened it up, and the uh, other one was um, well, they got some kind of a uh, drink joint there. No, the, the mucky, duck. mucky Duck Bar, I yeah. guess, yeah. And who was the fifth one? You've named four. Well, right now, which was, oh, the other one would be C.B. Randall. C.B. Randall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, was Pearl, were the Stokes who live on Sanibel, were they on this island at any time? The uh, Stokes family has never lived on this family, they, uh, on this island. They've lived on Sanibel. Although the uh, last year that there uh, was school held on this island, uh, Pearl Stokes, her name was, I think, uh, Pearl Gibson at the time. She was staying with her Aunt Bessie and went to school uh, while Robert Knowles was a school teacher. At, I see. Did the, Gibsons, did the Gibsons live on this island? Uh, part of the uh, time. It, once I never did know for sure whether they owned the property uh, adjoining Hal Francis or whether they just rented that uh -huh. on the uh, Sanibel, and then uh, for a while they'd used the uh, house down here that uh, belonged to Johnny Fole. Now there's Mr. Knowles who taught school here. Did he own any property on the island? No, not that I uh, know of. He was. Uh, uh, just a young school teacher at that time. His father 
owned some property, I think over on Buck Key. His grandfather owned some property up here that we called the, uh, named the Mounds after. We called Knowles' Mounds. Where would they be? They would be uh, on the, the uh, right-hand side of the road that goes from here to the South Sea Plantation. At that time, why uh, there was uh, more visible from the uh, water, and uh, from the, the Gulf. Road, you mean from the Gulf? No, from the bay side. From the bay. The, uh, because they were they were right on the edge of the water, but they uh, if the Gulf is not stopped coming in, they will be from the Gulf before very long. <clears throat> they. Joe, do you think if I made a map? of this island that you would be able to place pretty closely where all of these first settlers lived and where the groves were do you think you could make make out a map for us the um, about the only way we could do that is to get a uh, 1918 uh, map uh, uh, all right the, I'll, try uh, since then, I'll try to procure one if you'll I'll try to fill it in for me would you do that I think I could do that pretty well okay the, well um, We'll, we'll try that someday then, Joe. The, w the way the map is now, you see all we've got is the um, east edge of the original uh, map. Yes. You see from uh, the northern part, there's way over half of it is already gone. I see. And the, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, Joe, I'd we'll make that map someday. Now, I'd like to talk a little more about automobiles on the island. Do you recall who owned the first automobile on the island? The very first automobile that came to the island was the one that belonged to Knowles, and it was... Now, what Knowles? Is that the school teacher? That Knowles, his father? His father. Oh, see, yes. yes. And uh, the next one after that was a Model T Ford that um, Tobe Bryant bought in order to make it over into a tractor. He, um, the, and he needed a uh, tractor, of course, worse than he needed a, um, a needed an automobile. You couldn't go any place in an automobile other than to the post office and back, but the um, a tractor would operate cheaper than you could feed a horse the year around <laughs> to only use them for a uh, during the time that you cultivated the grove. Yeah. So uh, so the we rest had... of the time, why well, you'd be feeding your horse uh, hay and uh, oats that you'd have to buy for. Uh, Makes them way more expensive to do things with uh, horse flesh than it is with um, automobiles. So then we but had two cars here. We had Knowles and Bryant. Now what other cars came in after the those? Uh, next ones after that was um, brought in on the Gladys, and um, was only a uh, wintertime uh, affair. That was uh, Dickies had a Franklin. And uh, about the time my um, uh, brother took over uh, ice delivery, uh, he had a, model, a T Ford truck that um, that was replaced the um, mule cart that had been owned by John Norris, who was the first gray man that was on the island when I came in the uh, a few years earlier. Now, after the Dickey car, what came here? Let's see. The uh, next one might have been um, Eaton, and then um, Dukey Martin uh, brought a Buick on the uh, island, and um, the. Um, well, then there weren't very many here until Collier put the ferry in. Yes, that was uh, the turning point. After that, uh, the cars got more numerous because uh, part of the, after that, they, um, about that time at least, they straightened the road out that went from uh, Ponderosa to uh, Fort Myers. And uh, some people would come out from Fort Myers just for the... Um, they come over on the morning ferry and uh, enjoy the beach and whatever else and then catch the last ferry back. 
that ferry though was uh, uh, lost in 26 hurricanes so we went then about a year or so without a ferry again before uh, Kinsey uh, decided to uh, o opened his, open yes. up um, now as the road again. as the road came along uh, down Sanibel uh, you had to use the old bridge yes uh, the um, road uh, would be almost impossible for to describe to a person that uh, from what's left there now because as you go through Mitchell's after they built the new bridge the um, you had to turn and go uh, back west to go back out to where the uh, base of the old bridge was and then the uh, from the uh, Captiva side of that bridge he went past the uh, uh, about where the north end of Silver Key is uh, now almost uh, back east in other words you went way out there and then turned right around and come back again made almost a hairpin uh, loop about and where was that loop it would be out in the Gulf now every bit of it because now when you go through Mitchell you turn left instead of right uh -huh. so you'd be going uh, the uh, absolutely the reverse direction from what the road went at the first time when they after they'd moved the bridge well now did that whole road did that all erode and uh, is that all gone that's all <clears throat> gone uh, not only all the uh, first part of the road is um, gone but after we uh, straightened it out the part that we straightened out is uh, what? even gone. What part Pardon did you me? straighten out? We straightened it out from where uh, you go through um, uh, Mitchell's, went right straight south across Ford's property. Where was Ford's property? Ford's property, uh, well it, his Ford's property includes uh, Silver Key. Uh, of course Silver Key wasn't always Silver Key. That used to be a peninsula of uh, Sanibel Island. And uh, then and the uh, south edge of um, Sanibel that would be on this side of the uh, clam bio entrance. Well, who decided the, to straighten the road out? Oh, that was some of the islanders that they'd had an accident there when, when the road got so narrow where it was falling off into the bay. So they just went down there like a uh, Halloween uh, prank one night and um, and uh, drove through and tore out a, a little bit of brush and uh, made it so they drove through. And next time the road maintainer came through, he just naturally uh, thought that that's where the uh, road was supposed to be. Nobody had told him anything about it. So uh, when the uh, property owners jumped on to him, he was absolutely honest in saying he didn't know that uh, the uh, road had been changed. So and, that, that's how we got the road we come in on now? No, because um, when, they, um, when that road uh, commenced to wash away, uh, they uh, resurveyed it and got some kind of a right of way and turned the um, road... Um, from what, where the White Herring is now, they uh, uh, turned the road the opposite direction. They made a slow curve there. So when you go through Mitchell's now, you, by the time you get off the edge of Mitchell's property, you start making that uh, curve. So the road we have now is certainly a legal road. Yes, it's a legal road now, but there for a long time... Uh, the uh, I don't know whether there was ever a legal right away before that that ever connected the uh, road for to where the old Gulf Drive crossed the uh, the old bridge or not anyhow on that side of the island because I think that was Del Sega subdivision and uh, they made the Del Sega subdivision I believe without uh, crossing anybody else's property to get out. I they, see. Uh, so then you just, just left it there. You had the mule, the mule track just went wherever it wanted to, irrespective of whose property it was. Y yes, the um, uh, back in the time when people had mules, they even uh, a few places they had uh, what uh, where <coughs> if you went from one uh, property into another, at the, if you found a gate across 
the uh, any of those drive where you look roads, if the r gate was, you found it closed, you left it closed. You had to go through and then close the gate behind you. And um, of course the, um, the first surveyed road was Gulf Drive that went around uh, both islands. And that's the one, of course, that's uh, completely gone. Completely. But this interior road that was uh, where uh, people just followed the lines of least resistance is the road uh, that was adopted into a roadway that is there now. I see. For a long time we called <clears throat> that a Lighthouse Drive that went down across Sanibel, and I guess nowadays they've called it Periwinkle uh, Way. I didn't know... Yes. Uh, some of course, the lighthouse was here when you got here, wasn't it? Yes. When I got here um, in, uh, well, in 1918, we played baseball uh, down there between the lighthouse and the uh, gulf on the uh, south side. And uh, since then, there has been a time that I threw my cast net off of the porch of the uh, furthest over lighthouse cottage and caught a mess of uh, mullet on the, on the gulf side. So that uh, much washed away. and that, uh, at that, in 1918, we drove, went down in a boat and drove the boat almost to the lighthouse on the north side. And if you do that now, you'd be a, a good 50 yards or more from the lighthouse as close as you could get with a boat on the north side. Mm -hmm. That whole end of the island has moved over. Mm -hmm. Well, that's pretty, <clears throat> that's pretty much the same as has happened up near the Redfish Pass area. Yes, that's... The entire end of, um, of far parts of the entire island up here has moved over that much, and that uh, when they uh, picked up the uh, what didn't wash out of the bridge, the uh, the old bridge, the very first bridge that was built, they left the piling, and those piling that was on the um, uh, Sanibel side later showed up on the uh, beach side of uh, Captiva Island. You see that each yeah. time it whipped over, the um, and the current flowing back would cut further in toward Sanibel and Silver Key. Well, Joe, we've talked about an awful lot of things the past few days. <clears throat> Are there any other things that you can think of that we'd like to talk about now? The, uh, if um, I would talk very much more, we'd have to go to what happened uh, more recently, and of course everybody else on the island knows how fast things is changing now. Uh, the, uh, a couple years ago, I got lost on the other end of Sanibel. They've got canals going through where, uh, where we used to could drive, and um, I uh, <laughs> you couldn't got, find your way. Couldn't find my way on the you, island. <clears throat> what do you so think I, of the changes that have gone on here? Do you like them? I don't exactly like them, but I know that we can't hold back um, progress. It was if that's what they call progress. It's uh, like when Thomas A. Edison says, "There's so many uh, millions of people uh, know about." Um, Fort Myers are going to find it out, and it seemed like that is now happening. It's ever Lee County at this time is that, according to statistics I heard on the radio not long ago, is the fastest growing county in the nation. Did you like it better here in the old days, or do you like it here now better? It's, um, I felt more freedom the way we were. But I know it's impossible to ever go back, and uh, I'd like to see it a happy medium there someplace where we could have the uh, have the conveniences of modern time with uh, and not be uh, crowded. But I, I know these that would be an impossible dream. That'd be about as bad as the uh, Indians hoping to see the buffalo come back after the country uh, being cut up and uh, <laughs> raising modern uh, cattle. Yeah, yeah, those yeah, things yeah, are you impossible. You said a long time ago that you used to you used to land airplanes out on the on the Gulf Beach. Oh yes, that was. Uh, I didn't drive a land mine there because um, 
the uh, that entire beach was gone by the time I got around to get the airplane. Although I did land on uh, the uh, strip that had uh, did belong to uh, Crescent Farms. Where was that strip? That strip laid from uh, the north edge of Weeks's property to a, um, a west by northwest position across the island, and. Um, of course, that is destroyed now. It's got um, condominiums built on the west uh, end of it, and a uh, yacht basin is cut into the um, east end of where the strip was. The other uh, strip that uh, is still being used at this time is uh, Casabel Strip. And before they had the Casabel Strip, they used to land right in behind where Bailey's store is now on uh, Sanibel, lengthways of one of those ridges. Who were these people who came over in planes in 1917 and 1918 and such? There was one uh, pilot working out there that would bring a doctor oh, uh, in case of emergency someplace. What kind of a plane was it? The uh, first planes that landed here was the uh, a Jenny's, you might say, was what was made over from the uh, World War I Army plane. And then they, um, uh, of course, they got steadily better. They got um, one that they called the Robin, and uh, the, uh, it was a lighter plane that had more efficiency. And uh, the Caner <coughs> built a pretty nice plane that was used for a while. Well then we really had progress starting here in 1919 with airplanes coming in. Yes, well it's I guess like the rest of the United States it was on a slow uh, process of... Whether you want to call it progress or not. Yes. Well Joe we've certainly occupied a lot of time and I'm sure that we have shrunk your, your, your sponge-like brain down a little bit over the past few days. We have a lot of information here and I appreciate it very much. And if you should happen to think of anything else that we should put on tape for posterity, I wish you'd contact me so we can do it again. I hope that it uh, is beneficial to someone, uh, although uh, I know that uh, nothing that we know will necessarily fully benefit the uh, next generation, say, uh, because they'll be facing an entirely different problem than what we uh, faced, and I guess they'll just have to solve their own problems as they get to them. Well, you certainly solved yours, and thanks very much, Joe. Yes. The foregoing conversations were held on Captiva Island in my home, Bedside Manor, which is on Captiva Drive Southwest. Conversations were between Joseph Benham Whiteman and Dr. Leo J. Hofschneider. Of course, my personal thanks go to Joe Whiteman for having spent nearly 10 hours in recording these mementos, and I'm sure that the community will appreciate them at present, and we hope that posterity also appreciates them.